It is such an honor to welcome you guys on behalf of the College of Agriculture, Food and Environment. Um, there is so much history and our, our living and past inductees represent this. We're celebrating this year the 150th anniversary of UK, but the Ag School preceded that by a couple of years and we have such a legacy to honor and our inductees are part of that legacy. We are so proud and we celebrate those who went to school here over the past 150 years, impacted their fields and impacted society and they continue to impact the college and that is true for all of our inductees tonight. We appreciate you all being here. We appreciate the families who are here supporting you all. We appreciate the parents of the inductees who entrusted those folks to come to UK in the first place. And we couldn't be happier to, to be celebrating you all tonight. I have a few people to recognize. We have David Schweitzer, who is a member of the first class of the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. David, who, um, let's give him a hand. <clears throat> And then I'll recognize some other folks who are, who are from UK who are here. Uh, first and foremost, um, our dean twice removed, Oren Little, and his wife Myrtle. Um, <laughs> Oren assures, assures me it's not an insult to be the dean twice removed. He likes the cover that that affords. We also have uh, my colleagues, and we can hold applause till the end, Jimmy Henning, Associate Dean for Extension and Director of Cooperative Extension, Ann Vale, I can't see you because of the lights, um, Director of the School of Human Environmental Sciences, Drew Graham, a Legislative Liaison and Director of the Alumni and Development Office, Quentin Tyler, Assistant Dean for Diversity, Marcy Hicks in the Development Office, um, Amy Van Meter, also in the Development Office, Bob Houts, where are you, Bob? Are you really here? I'm really here. Really here? Okay, Bob, hey. And, uh, and um, Mike Ritchie, our fearless leader of our development office. And um, I think he's the unofficial and the official ag, College of Ag historian because he knows, he was just telling Tom Hammond about his grandfather, and he knows all of your grandfathers. That doesn't say anything about your age, Mike, but you're great. And then Susanna Denemy, who's also here from the Development Office. We appreciate their support for our college. We are partners in all that we do, and we're honored to have all of you here. So um, without further ado, we'll let the ceremony start. Again, we're so thrilled to have you all here on behalf of the college. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dean Cox. We will begin our induction ceremonies with the posthumous inductees first. And joining me on stage to read the inductees is Michelle McDonald, yet another past president of the UK Ag and HES Alumni Association. Our first posthumous inductee is Henry Carlisle Basudin. He was born in Winchester in 1904 and earned a bachelor's degree in agriculture from the University of Kentucky in 1926. He played center on UK's basketball team during the 1925-26 season. In 1965, the student became one of 30 athletes to receive the Centennial Athletic Medallion. Known by sheep breeders throughout the world for his contributions to the industry, he served as president and director of the American South Down Association, vice president and board member as the International Livestock Show in Chicago, and a member of the Governor's Commission on Agriculture. Basudan won 12 grand championships and 18 tries at the International Livestock Exposition. His portrait was presented to the Saddle and Sirloin Club in 1971. And in 1950, he received the Green Pasture Award for Outstanding Conservation Practices, the highest award given by the Kentucky Soil Conservation Service. 
In 1962, Basudan received the Golden Sheaf Award from UK for outstanding agricultural achievements. In 1975, he was named to the UK Hall of Distinguished Alumni and received the College of Agriculture Distinguished Award for Leadership, Loyalty, and Service that same year. The student died in 1985. And here to receive the medallion on his behalf is his grandson, Henry Basudin. William G. Finn served as an associate professor in agricultural economics at UK. From 1924 to 1931, before transferring to the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. He served in the Bureau of Agricultural Economics, Agricultural Adjustment Administration, and Production and Marketing Administration. During World War II, he represented the interests of agriculture on the Strategic Materials Commission and the Munitions Board. In 1949, following the introduction of the Marshall Plan, he transferred from agriculture to the U.S. Department of State and was assigned to the U.S. Regional Organizations for Europe with headquarters in Paris. In 1954, he was named Director of Food and Agriculture at the European Mission. He retired from government service in 1961. Born in Burlington, Kentucky, Finn graduated from UK with a degree in agriculture in 1923. Mr. William Finn died in 1986. Our next posthumous inductee is William C. Johnstone. He spent a large portion of his career with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service where he worked as a county agent and later as a specialist. He graduated from UK in 1916 with a bachelor's degree in horticulture, and he spent about seven years teaching agriculture in Brazil before joining UK. After serving a few years as a county agent, John Stone began working in Lexington researching cover crops and their use to prevent erosion. John Stone became the chief proponent of the Kentucky 31 fescue variety that had recently been discovered in Kentucky. In 1945, John Stone devised the extension project known as the Corn Derby as a means of awakening farmers to the potential in corn production and followed its success with the Kentucky Green Pastures Program aimed at improving pastures in the state. John Stone left the university after 29 years to become the agricultural representative for the Kentucky Bankers Association. John Stone Fescue, developed in the early 1970s by UK and the US Department of Agriculture, was named in his honor. And Mr. John Stone's medallion tonight is being accepted by his grandson, John John Stone. Joseph Hoeing Castle received a Bachelor of Science in 1884 and a master's degree in 1886 from UK. He went on to receive a doctorate in chemistry from John Hopkins University. A native Lexingtonian, he returned to UK as a professor in 1888 and led the general organic and agricultural chemistry program until 1905 when he left to become chief of the division of chemistry at the U.S. Public Health and Marine Hospital Service. The UK Alumni Association traces its history to 1889 when Castle persuaded a few of his fellow faculty members, who were also UK graduates, to establish an alumni club. He served as the organization's president from 1891 to 1902. From 1909 to 1911, he was the chair of chemistry at the University of Virginia. 
1911, he returned to UK to head the Department of Chemical Research in the Agriculture Experiment Station. One year later, he was named director of the experiment station and held that role until his death in 1916 at age 53. He was also dean of the College of Agriculture from 1912 until just a few weeks prior to his death. Castle Hall on the UK campus was named in his honor. William Davis Salmon was inter internationally known for his contributions to human and animal nutrition and played a key role in the development of the livestock industry in Alabama. Born in Metcalf County in, in 1895, he received a degree in agriculture at UK in 1920. Salmon initiated pathology studies associated with nutritional, defi nutritional deficiencies. Among his significant contributions was showing that vitamin B actually was a complex of vitamins. He was a research professor of animal nutrition and an animal nutritionist at Auburn University. He became head of the Department of Animal Husbandry and Nutrition at Auburn in 1950 where he enlarged the department staff and began an expanded research program on breeding, feeding, and management of cattle, hogs, and sheep. He retired from the staff of Auburn University Experiment Station in 1965. Mr. Salmon died in 1966. Once again, William Salmon. Jesse Washington Tapp was born in Corridon on January the 2nd, 1900, and received his bachelor's degree in agriculture at UK in 1920. He would go on to a distinguished career in banking, retiring in 1965 as chairman of the board of Bank of America, a position that he held for 10 years. Prior to his affiliation with the bank, he joined the US Department of Agriculture where he was engaged in research and administrative work in agricultural economics. He moved to National Investors Corporation eight years later, working as an economist until 1933, when he rejoined the USDA as an administrator in various agencies, including heading the Federal Surplus Commodities Corporation from 1937 to 1939, and also directing the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation from 1938 to 1939. Tapp began his banking career as vice president in Bank of America's San Francisco office in 1939. He left the bank briefly during World War II to serve as associate administrator of the U.S. War Food Administration in 1943 and as president of the Axton Fisher Tobacco Company in Louisville from 1943 to 1945. He served on numerous business and community boards and organization and acted in an advisory capacity for a number of governmental committees. Mr. Tapp died in 1967. Jesse Washington Tapp. Thank you, Michelle. We will now begin our living inductees into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. And we begin with John Robertson. John began his career as a swine specialist and held several positions prior to being named Associate Dean for Instruction, a position he held from 1968 until 1994. Robertson is a believer in the total student experience and implemented that idea throughout his career at UK. Under his leadership, a career placement service was started for the college students along with international exchange programs that continue today. He began the student faculty picnic that is now is in its 46th year, as well as the annual scholarship banquet that allows students and donors to be recognized and interact with each other. He was also instrumental in starting the UK Agricultural Alumni Association. Robertson received his bachelor's degree in agriculture from UK in 1953 and his master's degree in animal husbandry in 1958. 
please congratulate Hall of Distinguished Alumni Inductee, John Robertson. This is such a great honor, and I hope I'm deserving of it. I can remember so many other people that gave so much, and I hope tonight you will permit me to include them in this uh, honor. I, uh, I'm so grateful for it, and I thank you very much for your uh, giving me this recognition tonight. We love you, and thank you. Bye-bye. Next living inductee is Marcus Randall Barnett. Randall Barnett served in many capacities during his tenure with the college, starting as an assistant 4-H agent and rising through the ranks to finish his career as an associate dean. He founded and for many years directed what is known today as the Kentucky Agricultural Leadership Program. He was instrumental in creating and promoting the Kentucky Cooperative Extension Advisory Council System, provided the leadership to better financially position county extension offices, and secured funding for several college facilities. He received a bachelor's degree in dairy production from the college in 1957, a master's degree in extension education from UK in 1964, and his doctorate from North Carolina State University in Adult Education and Administration. Would you please congratulate Hall of Fame Distinguished Alumni inductee, Randall Barnett. Thank you, Dean Cox. Uh, John, you set a, a tough pattern for me here. We're just making a few remarks. Now, I'm an extension person. <laughs> you know, um, I would like to take just a, just a few minutes to, to share some thoughts with you. When I got the letter from Dean Cox telling me that uh, I'd been one of the people selected for this special honor, I found myself from time to time reflecting back on my time with, uh, with this college. And let me ask you a question. Have any of you ever tried to single out one aspect of your life and trace it from beginning to the present? Uh, it, it's rather difficult. Someone has said that life can be viewed as a series of threads, each thread being a timeline of a significant part of your life. And I, I choose to look at it a little different. I think of life as a series of lines, each line representing a, an important part of your life, but each line extending from one dot to the next dot, each dot representing a, a significant event or happening in your life. And my line with the College of Agriculture started 71 years ago when I became a 4-H member. I was raised on a small farm in the northern part of Washington County. My mother and father had, did not have the opportunity to go to college, but both had a high regard for the UK College of Agriculture, Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. And I guess it was a foregone conclusion that when I became old enough, I would become a 4-H member. And let me pause, <laughs> Dean, to say that, that I realize that the official name now for the college is College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment. But for all of my life, it was College of Agriculture. And when I'm talking about the past, that's the way I usually refer to it. So please, please excuse me, OK? But I want to just talk about two or three of these dots along my line with the College of Agriculture. Uh, the first dot 
happened in the, the first week of June, 1949. I was an eighth grader, had the opportunity to come to Lexington to attend 4-H week, my first time on the University of Kentucky campus. And one day during that week, I remember walking southwest across the campus. And for those of you that are familiar with the campus, remember the sidewalk that was between the old chemistry building and the journalism building. Sidewalk that ended at the top of a, of a flight of steps overlooking the Funkhauser, entrance of the Funkhauser building. Embedded in the brick above the door of the Funkhauser building is a huge UK seal. I very vividly remember stopping at the top of those stairs, gazing in awe with, at that seal, and daydreaming about what an awesome thing it would be to be a student at the University of Kentucky majoring in agriculture. Uh, I'll never forget that point in my life. Four years later, in the fall of 1953, that dream became a reality, and I enrolled in, as a freshman in the College of Agriculture. Coming from a graduating class of 17, from a high school that did not own a microscope or a test tube, faced with two semesters of chemistry, general chemistry, one semester of organic, and one semester of zoology, I can tell you that I was one frightened young country boy. The, the fourth, the third dot on my, my line with the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture came four years later when I graduated with a, a degree in animal science. And then a few months later, the fourth major dot, that uh, being employment with the UK College of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service has already been mentioned. For the next 37 and a half years, my line with the College of Agriculture touched many dots, each dot representing a, a very uh, important and, and a real highlight of my life. Those dots represented collectively a very uh, happy and rewarding career. Uh, I owe so much to to this college. And uh, I thought that my last dot had been placed on that line in 1995, spring of 95, when I retired. But now that I stand here tonight, 20 years later, I realize that uh, another dot has been placed on that line. And for me, a dot that is probably the most meaningful, most humbling of all the dots. Because you see, when I mentioned that first dot, I was just a young guy dreaming about just the possibility of coming to college at the University of Kentucky. In my wildest of dreams, I could have never imagined that at some point in the future, my name would have been placed in the Hall of Distinguished Alumni for this college. Uh, I'm very, very humbled. And yet, as, as John alluded to, I realize that this, this award, this recognition, could and should be shared with many other people. Um, I, I cannot begin to name all the people who should share this with me, but I feel that I must identify three ladies. First, my wife, Jonelle, who has been an encouragement, a supporter, and a true friend throughout my career. Thank you, Jonelle. And then to the two ladies sitting directly in front of me, Elaine, Elena Reese and, uh, and Pam Poe Biddle, these two ladies served for many years as my administrative assistant. They did the hard work. They corrected all my spelling and my grammar. They kept my schedule. They were able to get me to most of my appointments on time. The hard work that these ladies did and the, and the loyalty that they had to me and to the college 
made me look much better than I deserve. And to co-workers like Dr. Logan Lauterbach that's here tonight, who were real team players, and to administrators like Orrin Little, who was so supportive and encouraging, and to all those who were a part of my nomination and selection for this, I am truly, truly thankful. And last but not least, I feel remiss if I did not say that uh, I thank a great and loving God who gave me the opportunity to be associated with this great college. Thank you. I about forgot his plaque there. Thank you, Randall. Our next inductee, Tom Hammond. He's recognized as one of the leading network sports broadcasters in the United States. His vast body of work includes covering the Olympics, calling thoroughbred racing, play-by-play -play for the NBA, the WNBA, college basketball, gymnastics, figure skating, and the Orange Bowl. He is the recipient of numerous awards, including three Emmys, two Eclipse Awards, horse racing's top honor. He was the TV play-by-play -play voice for Notre Dame football for 21 years. Hammond, who was born and raised in Lexington, has a degree in animal science with an emphasis in equine genetics from UK in 1967. And he is a strong supporter of the university, the university, the community, and the college where his grandfather, Thomas Poe Cooper, was once dean of this college. Would you please join me in welcoming our Hall of Fame inductee, Tom Hammond. Thank you so much for this fine honor. When you think of all the students who have passed through the College of Agriculture for 150 years, you realize how wonderful it is to be named a distinguished alumnus. And knowing my history with the UK Ag College makes it even more significant. I can't help but think how proud my grandfather would be, and my mom and dad as well, who were both UK Ag grads. Thomas Poe Cooper came to UK in 1918 and for the next 33 years served as Dean of the College of Agriculture, Director of the Experiment Station, and for a time acting UK President. And I think one of the measures of his legacy is the fact that nearly 100 years later there are so many entities around the campus and around Lexington that still bear his name. I was 15 when he passed away, but I had many wonderful memories of him. And I've heard some complimentary stories, great stories. Mike Ritchie is a font of those stories, by the way. And uh, it's just a, a wonderful legacy that I have and a connection to the College of Agriculture and to the University of Kentucky. In fact, our family now has four generations closely associated with UK. Nearly 50 years ago, as I was walking across campus to Dewey Steele's genetics class, David Schweitzer, or to an agronomy class, or to one of Dr. Little's classes in animal science, I could never have dreamed in my wildest imagination where the rest of my life would take me. That I would be a broadcaster of all things, and that it would take me around the world to describe some of the greatest sporting events on the planet was something I couldn't even think about. That I would have a chance to broadcast an Orange Bowl game for the National College Football Championship, or to describe dozens of NCAA tournament basketball games, many NFL and NBA playoff games, to host racing's Triple Crown and the Breeders' Cup, or to bring to the world 
action from 11 Olympic Games, summer and winter. To call Usain Bolt in 2008 in Beijing, winning the 100 meters and smashing the world record, and going back and looking at the tape and noticing that his shoe was untied and the lace flopped the whole way through the 100 meters. To go back to Atlanta, 1996, Michael Johnson, first man in Olympic history to win the 400 meters and the 200 meters in the same Olympics. Remember the golden shoes? Remember the flash bulbs following him across the stadium? He broke the world record then in the 200, and I remember I noticed at the end of his race that I had risen from my seat without even knowing it as he crossed the finish line. There was a British runner, 400 meter runner named Derek Redman in Barcelona, 1992. This was a preliminary round of the 400 meters. And as the runners went down the back stretch, he fell to the track holding the back of his leg. Well, the race finished. And I looked up, and there's Derek Redman struggling to his feet over on the other side of the track. And staying in his lane, he began to hobble to try to finish the race. And as he rounded the turn for home, a man came charging out of the stand. Security tried to stop him. He wouldn't be stopped. It was his father. His father ran onto the track, supported his son on one side, and together they hobbled to that finish line he wanted so desperately to reach. To me, that was always an example of Olympic spirit. At the Winter Games in Salt Lake City, Sarah Hughes, 16 years old, took the ice for her long program with no chance to win, but with all the pressure off, she skated the skate of her life and became one of the most improbable gold medal figure skating winners in Olympic history. I remember 2000 in Sydney, Kathy Freeman, the aboriginal Australian 400 meter runner. She had been chosen to light the Olympic flame in the opening ceremonies a few days earlier and she had the expectations of a whole country on her shoulders. Well, she took the track, and as they came into the home straightaway, she was fourth or fifth, had no chance to win. 110,000 in Olympic Stadium in Sydney at the top of their voices. And somehow, I still don't know how, somehow she willed herself to victory in that race, and two steps beyond the finish line, she collapsed to the track with the weight of the world off her shoulders. And of course, I remember the last summer games in London, the track and field venue and the British won two gold medals in the space of 45 minutes. The Olympic Stadium in London held 80,000 and I've been in lots of stadiums bigger, but I've never heard one as loud as that after the Brits won their two gold medals in that short amount of time. And to hear them in the medal ceremony belt out, God save the queen, sent chills down your spine. So many great moments, so many memories. It has been an unbelievable ride for me. And to think it all started with a part-time job reading race results on WVLK for $35 a week. <laughs> it went on to announce the Keeneland sales, went on to local TV. And uh, while I never expected to go into broadcasting, I always felt that my UK education prepared me for anything. And I'm so proud of the College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment and how it's adapted to changing times and remains one of the vibrant colleges in the university. Again, considering my ties to UK and the College of Agriculture, this is one of the uh, finest honors of my life. Thank you very much. Our next Hall of Fame inductee is William Moody. During William Moody's tenure as a UK meat scientist, he taught more than 2,500 students, served as an advisor or a committee member to 55 graduate students, and had an active research program. He served as an advisor for one or more student organizations for 30 of his 37 years at UK. His passion for his students and his excellence in teaching 
and service are reflected in his seven teaching awards. Dr. Moody lives in Lexington and continues to be a strong supporter of UK and the college and farmhouse fraternity. He received a bachelor's degree in 1956 in animal husbandry from UK and a master's degree in that same field in 1957. He received his doctorate degree in meat science and physiology from the University of Missouri in 1963. Would you please congratulate and make welcome to the stage Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee, Dr. William Moody. It is with great honor and appreciation that I accept this award tonight. I am deeply humbled and honored to be chosen as one of this year's college's Hall of Fame recipients. Not in my wildest dreams, as I think Randy pointed out earlier, did I expect to receive this recognition and be included in such a distinguished group, as has already been mentioned by Dr. Robertson and others. I would be remiss tonight, I think, if I did not take a, a minute of time to give credit to my late parents who taught me at a very young age to have a love for nature and animal agriculture. Then later when I came to UK in the early 50s and majored in animal husbandry, and began working with folks in the College of Agriculture. I knew then that I had found my life's calling. Being associated with ag people all my life and <clears throat> teaching my favorite meat science courses and having the opportunity to, to know and to make lifelong friends with hundreds of students over my nearly 40 years of teaching has taught me more joy and happiness than you will ever know. In short, the love for agriculture is in my blood and always will be, and I'm extremely honored to receive the highest award the College of Agriculture offers its graduate students. At this time, I would like to introduce my wife, Freda, who has been my best friend and loyal companion for over 50 years. With her, without her love and support, I could not have accomplished the things that were mentioned here in my introduction. I also had the honor and pleasure to introduce my only nephew, Peter Peff, and his wife, Pamela, and their three children, Luke, the, their oldest son, and his wife, Cindy, from Louisville, Beth, a sophomore engineering major at the University of Louisville, and Amos, a senior in high school. Would Freda and the PF family please stand and be recognized? Thank you. In closing, I want to especially thank Amy Van Meter for nominating me and those who wrote letters of support on my behalf, Benji Michael, Bob Harmon, Greg Grenfro, and Herb Ackerman. Freda and I are also honored tonight to have Lisa Cox, a dear friend for many years from the college, sit at our table. Thank you, Lisa. Last but not least, I want to thank the selection committee for believing in me with their vote of confidence. This all proves that it is, the important, that it is important to have friends who are willing to take the time and effort to go the extra mile to support a fellow colleague. For this, I am extremely appreciative. 
I might add, I'm sure Randy and Tom and John will agree with me, it's nice to receive this award while we're still alive. <laughs> so it can be appreciated and enjoyed. For this, we owe it to the, not to the selection committee. Again, thanks for the honor. As Tom mentioned earlier, as I can think of no other award that means more to me than being recognized by my own college. Thank you very much.